you're still making noises. <laughs> so just disregard that. It may have uh, stopped. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the Cherry Pearls Podcast, episode 48. Thanks. We have 47 on the sheet. <laughs> I think we're on 48. Uh, we are a knitting and spinning podcast coming to you from outside New Orleans, Louisiana. And this is our anniversary episode, right? Yes, that was last week, but I was out of town, so we'll count this as our anniversary yeah, episode. Yeah, so we're going to be drawn for prizes, and we have two new giveaways or one? Two. Two new giveaways. And some finished objects. No, and... You can really see Pearl here. Oh, yeah. she. <laughs> Pearl I do this not... every week. I hold her because I want people to see her because of her fans... But she does not like to be held, and she's giving me this look right now. Yeah, Pearl's not a holden kitty. She loves to be petted, but she just doesn't want to be held. And so it's hard to get her to show up unless you hold her. But I think she's ready to go. I think she yeah. said I had enough, Mom. Anyway, yeah. I'm Mary. I am Robin. <laughs> Want to go first? Sure. Um, I am Snippin' Full on Ravelry. And on Instagram, I am my angry orange cat. And I am Teeny Button on Instagram and Ravelry, and you can find my Etsy shop, Teeny Button Studio, where I sell hand dyed yarn. So uh, there's a podcast group. It is Cherry Pearls Podcast on Ravelry. That's where you can find all of our show notes as well as our threads for our giveaways. And it is linked in the drop box down bar, as usual. I always want to say Dropbox. It's not the Dropbox. So we had a Potiversary giveaway that we closed the thread for this afternoon. And we drew a winner. Would you like to announce the winner? Sure. So the winner of our Potiversary giveaway, which was a bag. Um, oh, what about the prize here? Um, where's, where's, where's oh, it's in the prize box. Oops. It's on the last episode. It's on the last episode as well as a picture of it is in. Did you put a picture of it in the thread? Oh, well, if you, it's on watch, the last episode, <laughs> it's on the last episode, and if you follow Robin or I on Instagram, it's, it's on our Instagram feed, yeah. um, but anyway, uh, we get, we, um, drew for a beautiful bag, um, um, by Rick of Whimsy Stitches, um, there was, uh, some yarn by Robin, mm -hmm. a full a, skein of my soft sock, and a mini skein from Valkyrie Fibers. Uh, yeah. Some stitch markers that uh, I made, and then there'll be a pattern, uh, which is going to be up to seven dollars um, U.S. of pattern of the winner's choosing. So we drew for the pa uh, the pattern prize, and the winner is well, the whole prize, not just the pattern. Yeah, the prize. whole the whole thing. So sorry, <laughs> was post number eighty seven. That is Evie Liz, who is Yvette. So, um, Yvette, if you would um, send me a private message on Ravelry with your um, address, we will get that out to you. Yeah, so, congrats. Yeah. Um, we would also like to mention, um, usually for our giveaways, well, um, always for our giveaways, we do require that you be a member of the podcast group to win a prize. And um, there were a couple people who entered who were not members of the podcast group. Um, just wanted to give everybody a reminder that you do need to join to be eligible. Um, we do use random number generator and it didn't land on anybody who was not a member this time, but I would hate for someone to miss out on winning a prize just because yeah. they forgot that uh, one rule we do require. Yeah, um, it is at the top of the thread, so um, maybe just in the future just scan. I know everyone says the same. It's usually common procedure to have to be a member of the group to win. But anyway, so just a little reminder. Congratulations, Eva. Yeah. Um, we do have uh, a, so we drew for our prizes last episode or the episode before? Um, for the Mardi Gras. Last, the last episode? episode, yes. Uh, we did have a prize winner who has not contacted this us. This was for the crew of Yarnia's Cow. Yes. We gave away three prizes. Um, two of the winners have contacted us, but one of the winners has not. So um, if you have not watched last episode and you did enter the cow, um, I would suggest you go back and watch um, episode 47 because um, you might have won and you may not know. So um, we'll hang on to that for a week. And if we have not heard from the prize winner by next episode, next Friday, then we'll redraw for that prize. Yes. So um, if... Yeah, so by the time we go to podcast, if we haven't heard from you, um, somebody may be a winner in, yeah. uh, in episode 49. Yeah. So, so um, sometimes you're a winner after the fact. <laughs> yeah. But let's give people enough time. I know not everyone watches every podcast every week, but, yeah, but three weeks is a pretty... Three weeks is long enough for yeah. you to be able to pull it up if you're interested in seeing if you won something. So um, that is that. We are hosting 
a mini skein swap. Is mm -hmm. that what's up next? Yeah, mini skein swap is still ongoing. Um, the thread will stay open until the 20th. So today is the 17th, and I'll, so that means I will close it on Monday. Um, if you're interested, please post in the thread. Um, let us know if you're interested in shipping domestic or international. Or if you don't care. There's a lot of people who don't or care. Or if you don't care. Yeah. Um, it does not need to be indie dyed. It just needs to be fingering weight yarn. So it can be something you've dyed. It can be something that you've bought commercially. Or it can, you know, a commercial dyer. Or um, it can be an indie dyed. It does not matter. And uh, I had a question asked if the skeins need to be labeled. Um, that would be very nice. I know I would like to know exactly what yarns I'm getting in case I see something that I really like and would like to buy. Again. Yeah, there's been minis I've knit with, and I'm like, I love this. I need to have a skein of it. So it's good to know what it is, what colorway it is, that kind of but stuff. But we also know that sometimes you just don't know what, what it is. Yeah. You know, the ball band has been lost, or maybe you received the mini in another swap, and it just wasn't your cup of tea, and you'd like to pass it on to someone who may like it better. So it is completely up to you if you want to label them or not. Um, we're just throwing that out there in case... Um, you did have that question. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, come on over to the thread and let us know if you're if you're in. Yeah. Um, pattern we, giveaway. We had uh, two patterns that were sent to us for review. Um, both of the um, got it. Yeah. Both of the um, designers got in touch with us and asked us to review their patterns. Um, the first one I'm gonna mention is this one. It's called Vanilla with a Twist, and it is by Kath. Thorley. It is for a um, cuff down sock and I think it would be a great sock for a um, new sock knitter. I have never knit a cuff down sock and looking at the pattern I think it would be easy to follow her pattern. She, um, I think she gives very good instruction. She also will give you a uh, stitch count on rows whenever there are increases or decreases done. Um, it is a sock that has a, um, oh god, what do you call it? A gusset. Heel flap and gusset, which is something I've never done on any sock. I have. It's really interesting. I've done it toe up, so it's probably different than top down, but it's very, it's very interesting. Yeah, so I thought that, I think it would be a great pattern. Um, it would probably be a pattern I would try if I'm interested in doing a, uh, a cuff down sock, which I think at some point I think I would like to try because yeah. it's something I've never done before. So um, I do want to um, let you know one little thing, and Robin pointed it out to me. Um, Kath must be in the UK, and she lists the um, needle size as a UK um, 2.5 or a US size 1. And I'm familiar with a US size 1 as being a 2.25, but UK does have different needle sizes. So when you look at that, um, just make sure you're paying attention to the correct needle size you'll need for her pattern. Um, Kath is offering to give away two um, patterns, um, of two of these patterns, so we'll open up a thread in our Ravelry group and you can post in there if you're interested in possibly winning um, a copy of this pattern. Should they post um, what yarn they would use? Um, yeah, that, I think that's that would always be a great fun. idea. Yeah, so if you're interested in winning um, Kath Thorley's Vanilla with a Twist, and I'll show it up close again. It's got, um, she had the cuff is a twisted rib, and then um, she's got some really nice, um, I don't know if it's a slip stitch heel, but the, you know, it's a, kind of a little bit of a pattern back here on the heel part. So I think it's a really nice pattern. So yeah, why don't you um, let us know what yarn you would knit with if yeah. you were interested in winning this pattern, because um, I always like to hear what people people's preferences are, yeah. and sometimes I find out about a yarn I didn't know about. Yeah. I think so, it's fun. That's the first pattern. There'll be two winners for this. The second pattern that was sent to us is, is a shawl pattern called Gulf Breezes, and it is by Tabitha's Heart. This is a really pretty shawl pattern. Um, you can tell that um, it's got a lot of lace at the bottom, and it looks really pretty in this gradient that's um, the right here. in a gradient. Yeah. Um, and looking at the pattern, um, the designer... Um, Tabitha has got a lot of detail in it. She has quite a few patterns that she has written and um, you can tell that um, she's got her process down really, really well. Her directions are very clear and she gives you ideas on how to um, 
do the, you know, if you want to do a different colors, how to do it. Um, if you want to do one like the gradient, she mentions how she did that. She also gives you directions at the end on how to block the shawl. And so I think those are really good tips to have if you're interested in knitting a shawl and then how would you block it? Because different shawls, depending upon the shape, are, are blocked in different ways. And, and, you know, a shawl that has a straight edge is blocked one way as, a per, as opposed to one that has points. And this one, as you can see, has a curve and she lets you know how to, um, how to uh, block that out. So um, Tabitha's Heart is giving uh, offering a giveaway for any one of her patterns. She is offering this to two different people, so you can win a coupon code to um, win one of her patterns. So let's do the same thing with this um, as we were talking about with the sock pattern. So if you're interested in possibly winning um, a pattern from Tabitha's Heart, and I think this Gulf Breeze shawl would be a great one to choose, um, go ahead and let us know in the, in the giveaway thread what yarn would you use to knit um, one of her patterns. Feel free to go and look up her uh, other patterns. We will have both of these um, designers, uh, their uh, Ravelry shops linked in the thread so you can go and see what other patterns that they um, have in their shop. So if you are interested in winning one of Tabitha's um, patterns because it's not specifically for this one, you can let us know what you possibly would choose and what yarn you would knit with it. Does that sound good for you? All right. So um, this one's beautiful. I can see myself knitting this one yeah. down the road. So thank you both uh, to both of these ladies yeah. who uh, sent us these patterns. I think that they did a fantastic job on the patterns and looking at them um, kind of at it from a different eye now that I've kind of written a couple of patterns. Um, I appreciate all the work that both of these ladies put into their patterns. Um, speaking of that, we do have a test knit thread, right? Yes, I was going to mention it later on. Oh, okay, we'll mention it later on. Yeah. Um, I have one more thing I'm just going to throw out there. Okay. Um, so for those of you who subscribe to the Indie Untangled newsletter, you may yes. have noticed this morning that I was featured in their newsletter. Not me, the Teeny Button Studio um, company was featured. Um, I submitted the vendor application last week, and I did not know I was going to be featured. So... That was pretty cool. I think that was amazing. I mean, I opened up my email this morning. I didn't and tell you I had, I had... No, it was a wonderful yeah. surprise. Because it was like... It was a surprise because I did not know I was going to be featured. I, I didn't know her. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. I'm on the... I think I'm in her blog as her post for today. So that's pretty cool. I had, I had some people asking about some of my New Orleans colorways. So... I'm excited for you. Yeah, I thought that was neat. Way to go, Rob. So we have some finished objects, and by we, I mean you. Yes, yes. Um, I don't have anything finished. I was out of town last week, and pretty much the only thing I worked on while I was gone were those ever-popular preemie baby hats that I've been working on. Um, some people take socks as their go-to vanilla knit. Um, mine has always been hats, and since I am uh, trying to um, get points for um, Into the Wool, I am focusing on baby hats. So um, y'all have seen this lovely yarn many, many times. That's off-white. <laughs> I still have a bunch of this left. You, but a, you had four skeins of it, something like that? Yeah, I have four skeins. Oh my goodness. So um, I have gone through at least two, I want to say. Karen Simply Soft Solids and Off-White. Yes, so that's what this is. The pattern is um, Preemie Hats for Charity by Carissa Browning. So here's hat one, I mean, or hat six maybe of this color, I don't remember. Ten. It's on my pattern page. A lot. Well, I've done 11 hats all together. I was talking about just in this color. Mm. But anyway, if you're interested in seeing more about the hats on pattern page. I got sick of that yarn, so I brought um, some... Oh, the speckles are cute. I, should have I, brought, um, I bought some more yarn. Um, this is a Baby see. Bee... Sweet Delights Prince in 301 Kitty. Yeah, I like the name, Kitty. Kitty. So this is a really pretty white yarn with pink and blue um, pastel um, speckles. And um, so I have knit four of these. Um, so, yeah, this was kind of like what I did when I was watching baseball games last week. Uh, Philip and I went to spring training games in Tampa and had a fabulous time. And I got a lot of knitting in, on the airplane and... Whatever. So that's five hats for the week. 
Um, every think, time you do that, you put the hats down, you tap them, and you shake the table. Every I time. I will never learn. Uh, the second thing I finished this week was a, another pair of um, a pattern that I have written called Streetcar Mitts. Um, the testers felt that it might be on the bigger size, so I'm thinking about offering the mitts in two different sizes, um, a large and a medium, and so I downsized the pattern to see if um, it would fit one of the testers who has a smaller hand. Uh, they do fit me perfectly fine, so um, it's not that it would be a small, I think it might be more of a medium. But this is Knit Picks Felici in the Hummingbird colorway. I really enjoyed this colorway. It's got really pretty blues and teals and greens and this lovely fuchsia color right here. And, and a cat um, hair on it. Yeah, well, it, most everything in our house has cat hair. So that was the second um, project that I finished this week. I, technically, it's the... Well, I don't... Sixth. I know technically the hats... <laughs> Yeah. Are, an edit, are a project of their own, but on my Ravelry page, I just have the hats as one big project, and I'm listing all of the hats in that one project because I don't want to have a bazillion hat hats on my page. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't really worry about number of projects mm -hmm. that I've completed. So, yeah. anyway, that's um, basically what I got accomplished this week. Cool. So cool. you worked on a lot of things, but didn't did. finish anything. I have a lot of big projects. Well, you do. I have a lot of socks and I have my find your fade so I did finish one sock so let's show you that Ooh, look, uh -huh. it. look at it I forgot to mute my phone excuse me yeah Larry wants to know what you're up to well I did not tell him <laughs> I am podcast. showing your sock Larry <laughs> that's what I'm up to right now yeah. these are for my boyfriend Larry I started them for me and he saw it and he's like I have to have that so these are for him and they are really big and they do not fit very well on the sock blocker well, that's because so, we don't have a Larry size sock blocker. We don't have a Larry size sock blocker. Um, I did my normal formula. I cast on 24. I started the toe. Cast on 24, and then I increased to 70, 74 for him, I think. 74 sounds familiar. Well, 72 is a multiple of 4, which is what most people use, but 72 was too small and 76 was too big. So, so Larry's in the middle. Yeah, so I do 76. Um... And then I just knit in a tube. I did do an afterthought heel. I'll take it off and I'll show you. Um, afterthought heel, I used the Smooth Operator Pattern, of course, by Susan B. Anderson. That is my go-to afterthought heel. Um, I did not use her method for picking up the corners because I was watching a show and didn't want to stop <laughs> to read the instructions. So I picked it up the way that I usually do, and it's not terrible. It's probably not as neat as if I had followed the pattern. But what I did do is I did her um, straight line decreases. She does it with a triple decrease. I'm not going to spoil it because it is a paid pattern. It is a fantastic pattern. I definitely suggest you buy it um, just because there's so much information in it. So it does make that nice single line on each side. And I really like it. It doesn't look like the toe. The toe has the... The double. The double, yeah. But that's okay. I don't think he'll care that much. No, I don't think... I don't, I don't think, think he'll notice. Gee, Robin, I like these better. I know. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think... It, especially if you're receiving a gift. No one's going to... No one's going to care about no that. No one should care. Let's put yeah. it that way. Um, so this is the second sock. Would you like to show it while I get the... Absolutely. Tag? Yeah, second sock. Um, I'm getting close to putting in the waist turn for the heel. So here we go. And this was actually a team effort. I think you've knit about half of the sock. I don't think so. I've knit a little bit on the sock. We went to, um, I was, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, I was supposed to have had a eye surgery, like a laser surgery done on Tuesday. And so um, you had brought a hat and you had finished it, so you knit on the sock. I did not get my surgery yet because the laser was broken. <laughs> yeah. So I'm it's gonna, coming in the next day. Yeah, I'm going to be getting it on Tuesday, so keep your fingers crossed for me because I'm kind of You'll be apprehensive. Fine. You'll they're, be fine. they're lasering the, my retina to the back of my eye. Yeah, Robin has some lattice so, that they're going to stop. So, um, But you'll you'll do well. Yeah. You'll be great. And the sock looks nervous. wonderful. Yeah, um, so all this is to say the yarn is Tumbleweed Yarns. And the colorway is, it's on her, um, sorry, it's on her Aurora Fingering, which is an 80-20 superwash merino nylon. And the colorway is Kermit, which is not after Kermit, Texas. It is after Kermit the Frog. Well, a lot but, of people don't know there's a Kermit, Texas. Yeah. 
I, still I think know there's a Kermit, Texas, because that's where I was born. Yeah. And I assumed that this is what the yarn, who, what, who she named the yarn after. Because she's a Texas dyer. Because she's a Texas dyer, and she had some other yarns named after Texas towns. And so I went, oh, yeah, you've got a yarn named after Kermit, Texas. And she's like, I didn't realize The yarn was matches one. us today. I realize that. Because today and... is St. Patrick's Day. I'm not wearing green. Actually, I'm wearing green underwear. Yeah, well, not that y'all needed to know that. I was but. just going to say, you're wearing green where people can't see it. But anyway, yeah, go ahead and go with that. We don't do St. Patrick's Day, really. I don't know what like, you mean. I don't, don't know. Do I don't know what like, people do for St. Patrick's Day. Like, I feel like people make a bigger deal out of it. Like, someone, we were driving home tonight, and someone had green Christmas lights out. Mm-hmm. Like, who celebrates St. Patrick's Day like that? Like, what but are, there's a lot of people. Well, what do people do? I don't really know. Well, I mean, we're, none of us are of Irish descent, but I'm sure that if you have some sort of ties to Ireland or or have an affinity for Ireland, you could, you, there's lots of stuff you can do. You know, mm-hmm. there are traditional Irish Irish meals that people eat. You know, oh, yeah. you had the green lemonade you could have gotten from Cane's. Yeah. I mean, don't they do the, the Irish Italian parade? They do the Irish Italian parade. Um, if you celebrate St. Patrick's Day, let us know what you do, because I'm curious. We don't really do St. Patrick's Day. Well, I did in college. Mm. We went out to the bars. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. There's a lot of green beer specials. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Yeah, you were well, crazy. Yeah, yeah. A lot of brain cells were killed. But anyway, yeah. uh yeah. So it stays St. Patrick's Day. Those socks do look um, well, and Larry can wear them next year for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, because I know Larry's really concerned. Yo, about, yeah, about it. It, yeah. it was. It's actually getting warm again. It was cold for the past couple of days. By cold, I mean like in the fifties. Yeah. So now it's back up in the 70s and 80s. But well, no, it's not in the 80s. Not quite. Not yet. No, no. no, no. Anyway, let's move on to our next work in progress. You just have one. I have two. You have two. I mean, it's another one of those hats. No. Oh. <laughs> So many of those people are gonna start getting sick of these. Stop eating that. You shit. know what? I'm not really worried if people are getting sick. I mean, it's like this is what I'm working on, you know? Carl's sitting in the chair and she's eating some sort of piece of tape. So Yeah, well, you left it there. She says, Oh, thanks. I love plastic, Mom. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, so if, I mean if you want to pass on my uh oh, okay. I mean, I don't even know where I put it. I brought it in the room, but I'm s I do not see it. So yeah, it's another one of those hats, people. You've use your them. imagination. You know them, you love them. <laughs> see? It looks just like but, that. No, actually, it looks like this because it's in this yarn. I'll it was one that I was working on in, um, when I was out of town. Do it I'm, again. I'm on the deep. No, I didn't. Um, it's on the decreases, so you can see it next week yeah, when it's finished. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show this next. I'm going to show this bag first from Lynn of Sunshine and Bubblegum, who's one of our besties. Yay, Lynn. And my Sir and Pikachu pin that matches. Show it every time because I love it. Um, I think she might have one of these in her shop still. Sunshine and Bubblegum on Etsy. Look at this. Um, yeah, so this is Patisserie Party Isn't that socks. gorgeous? And I didn't do that much on them, but I'm going to show y'all anyway, because... I love this yarn. That's what we're doing today. So these yarn. are the Be My Valentine socks by The Cozy Knitter. And, uh, again, the colorway is Patisserie Party, and this is my slick sock base, which is MCN. It's at 801010. And it's soft. It is quite soft. I'm not going to rub your socks on, on my face, so, but I'll, I'll rub the skein. Yeah. So that's a great pattern. I love the yeah, little X's and so O's perfect. that run up the side. It's, and my little cupcake adorable. stitch marker is pretty cute, too. Mm-hmm. So I did not do a ton of work. I think I was at the stitch marker last time I showed y'all. But I only had two real whips this week, so I figured I'll throw in this one because I did work on it. I keep this one in here, and whenever we're in here watching our trashy TV, that's what I work on. I have projects all around even, the house. I'm not even talking about trashy projects. We watch some trashy TV. I like trashy TV. So, not very exciting, but they're they're cool. Um, I do have this colorway in my shop. I it, um had five skeins for this update. I think I think two of them have sold. There's some in my shop right now. So if you're interested, it is there. But look at the bag. The bag is so pretty. So that is my second whip. Would you like to show your uh, your blanket? Sure. Um, I am continuing my love for my granny stripe blanket. So it's a little longer. Let's see. I need to turn it this way so you can see where the, the progress keeper is. So this is where I was last week where my little robot stitch marker is. And I knit from here up to here last, in this past week. 
So it's it's on the big side. Wait, 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 I missed that. Where where were you last week? Was oh, this? at the robot. At the robot. Really? Yeah. So I basically doubled the length. I want to say because it's crazy. Yeah. More than that. You know, it's about exactly double. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a lot of crochet. I really am enjoying working on this. So it's it's relatively long. Um, it's going to be a nice size blanket. Um, let's let's talk about this yarn because I have been lusting after this. I love this. this yarn. So um, I cannot remember whose yarn this is. Is this Western Sky? Or is it Savvy Skeins? No, it's not Savvy Skeins. It's got to be Western Sky. Okay. It is. Um, I remember they were on the end. On the end, is that yes? Western? That's okay. Western Sky. All right, so this is Western Sky Knits. We got a DFW last year. We did, and it's in Unicorn something something. You used it for a shawl. I did. I will put this in the show notes. I know it's Unicorn something. I used it for a shawl. It's amazing. It's got Stellina. It's got a lavender tint, and then it's got all these amazing colors in it. I need to rescan it, but. It's good enough for my purposes right now. And um, I paired it with a a, white. a bare skein of yarn and, and did a shawl with it. And so that's why I've got so much left over. And I'm putting it a little bits of it into this. And I just, I don't want to use too much of it up because I love it so much. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a pair of socks. I want to do, I don't know, I don't want this on my feet. I may do, I may make some, uh, I may have to do some um, fingerless mitts in this. How many mitts can you wear? I, I love don't fingerless yeah, mitts. Yeah, but you never wear them. Well, it's never cold enough. But yeah, I whenever like it is them. cold enough, you can't find them. That's what happens That's to me. Not, oh, I know where they are. Oh, I, well, I don't know where my... No, I totally know where they are. Um, did you see that thread that they posted in Into the Wool? Uh, Robin and I are going into to Into the Wool uh, retreat uh, in September. And they've been, uh, the people who are going, they're doing like little um, the trivia, trivia okay. questions each month. And the latest one, she could have a brand new one. But the last one was, if you could knit one thing for the rest of your life, what would you knit? And it was hard for me to say either shawls or mitts. That's how much I love mitts. I know. I know. I know I was going to get that face. I love them that much. I did choose shawls. Mm -hmm. But it was just by the hairest of a hair. I pick socks. That I would now see. Uh, socks are all right. Socks are like little pieces of art. See, that's how I feel about these and shawls. Yeah, but I don't. I wear my socks every day. I don't wear mitts every day. That's that has where nothing I'm to do with it. Doesn't mean I don't yeah. love it. That's true. I don't have to wear it to love it. I can just look at it and unless you it. wear it, the longer it lasts. True enough. So your mitts will last forever. Never. <laughs> So anyway, this is my uh, crochet. I have loved, loved, loved it. I cannot put it down. Um, I have found myself, I actually raced through these so I could work on this. Because it was kind of like a deal to wear when I came home from my trip. Because I didn't want to take it with me because I don't want to take big stuff. I wanted to work on this when I got back because I missed it. Why didn't you bring them in? Because I'm not smart. Well, there it is. <laughs> I, well, the thing about it is, is if I'm at a baseball game, I can knit just, you know, because once I get the ribbing done, this is just plain stock and knit till I get the, the, to the decreases. Yeah, and I see the what decreases you're saying. I'm I can knit and look at a baseball game because you do not want to look from a baseball game because one of the, at one of the games, it was the, I can't remember which one it was, but one of the games we were sitting um, down, we weren't sitting up high, so it was the second game we went to with the Phillies. The ball um, was hit over our heads, but it ricocheted on the upper level and came back down and hit this girl in the back of the head. Ooh. Like, no one saw that coming. So, you need to pay attention to baseball games. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. So, that's why I didn't bring this, because I had to pay much more attention Yeah, okay. To this. I see that. So, yeah. So, yeah. Could have worked and, on the plane. Oh, yeah. But I just didn't want to bring a whole bunch of stuff. I was mm -hmm. trying, you know, we only had a carry-on. You're not like me. I bring yarn to yarn festivals just in case. Not me, man. I was like, like, I do. I don't have enough yarn. Got to buy more. No, you bring an extra bag so you can check it if you need to. Well, that's not what I'm, I thought you meant you bring yarn in case you run out of yarn. Yeah. No, yeah. man. That's what I did last year. I don't know why. I'm like, I'm bringing extra skein just in case I want to start a new project. No, that's your excuse to buy it. I don't know, ran out of yarn. Got to buy some well, more. Well, I did start a new project with yarn I bought too. Yeah. No, so. bring in an extra bag is brilliant. Because yeah. see, what you do is you go, you go there with a carry-on. But you got your extra bag in the carry-on. Carry yeah. 
and on the way home, then you check it. Then you check it and keep the yarn bag. Even if it gets lost, you've got stuff at home to wear and toothbrushes and yeah. underwear and stuff to wear. And so then you got your haul. You cake as a carry on because you don't want to lose. Can that. you imagine if they lost it? Oh, I'm crying. I would. I would never get over that. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We got the system down. We got this. Yeah. So, um, yeah. talk about the next whip. So yeah, I'm done with mine. I have at it. This is. In my grocery girl's bag, in my, um, I guess it's Mrs. Brown's bag. It's not the grocery girl's bag, but it's Mrs. Brown's bag from Jody and Tracy. And this is my Find Your Fade, which looks a lot different than it did last week because I did tons of work on this. I cannot put this down. This is like my crochet blanket for me. Okay. Everybody needs a crochet yeah. blanket. So, All right. So which one am I holding up first? This one. Okay. This is the old right. color? Yeah. Okay. So this is the front this is the front and okay from the bottom this is Pretania these are first let me preface this by saying these are all my colors um most of these are in the shop I think if you are interested I know a lot of people um see me knitting with stuff and they want to know if I have it so I try to keep stuff in the shop if I'm knitting with it um so this is Pretania this is Voodoo Queen this purple and then this really colorful one is Pretty floral bonnet. That's this. Which is the skein. Okay, so that's what it looks like up close yeah. in the un in the unknitted form. You keep shaking the table. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we need to get a sturdier table. I know. What we're what we're using is a pedestal table. So yeah, we need one that has yeah. actually four legs on the corner. Yeah. Well, the, Mary needs it. Robin might need, be okay not needing it. Yeah. So um, look how gorgeous that is. Look at look at. I love that one. It's it's firefly inspired. For those of you who might be wondering. Um, and so these are all single. Yeah, these are all in my solo single space. Okay. And I think I'm on section nine or ten for those who are who've knit the pattern. Um, I combined the first two colors of Britannia just because I wanted to use mo a larger chunk of the skein. So this is the first two colors. This technically is color C. This is color D, and this is color E. And so then this will be color F. Yeah. All right. This is um, mint macaron. Um, I don't think I have any in the shop. I think the last skein sold this evening. Look at that. But it's pretty and I like Isn't it. Isn't that pretty? And then my next this color. Like a flower right here. I know. Um, my next color is going to be Yielded Unicorns, which is one of my new colorways. And this is not the actual skein that will be going, in, going into my fade, but that's what it looks like. It's pretty. So, and then my last skein, I think, is going to be a really bright yellow purple. But that is... The fade, and I, I got, can see how that would be your crochet blanket. Yeah, I got to the part where this is the point, so it's starting to decrease. So you're going down. Yeah, and I love it. Oh my gosh, that is just so it's so, so much fun, so cool. It's so it's so potato chippy. Like I'm not gonna give it away, but it's I, don't, I hardly even have to look at the pattern. So what is your waffle denoting? Oh, Anything that is in no, particular. That's, that is the beginning of my melting rose, so I know when to start counting because the colors are very similar whenever okay. they're together. So it doesn't have anything to do with where you were last week. No, time. last week, I think I was, last episode, I think I was like here. Oh, okay. So you've knit quite a bit. I knit a ton. Okay. That's cool. what I mostly worked on this week. I'd love to get it finished for DFW so I can wear it. Um, and I think I'm on track. I think I'm on track to do that. I do want to finish Larry socks too for Candace of um, Pin Feathers and Pearls um, Stripey Socks Cow. So I have two things to finish by the end of the month, but we're only halfway through the month, so I got this. Perfect. But it's so big. Oh, it's so it's so squishy. It's garter stitch. So let's show it up close. Look at that. Look at that. I love it so much. I, I just there's a couple of colors in here that um I love. I love I love them all, but there's some that talk to me more than others. This one really speaks to me and pretty this last one. Yeah. 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 So I'm glad I get a chance to knit with these. I have I have only ever knit with Voodoo Queen. I have a pair of socks in Voodoo Queen. But the other colors I haven't used yet. So I like seeing them knit up. It's kind so, of cool. Yeah. I'm loving this project. This is like my TV knitting right now instead of the socks. Got it. Which is why I haven't done a whole lot of work on my socks. Well, everybody has a pattern that kind of pulls them away from other projects. That yeah. is yours. I am dreaming of a bendy arrow, doing another one. Your bendy but arrow was very cool. I want to do one out of my yarn now that I'm knitting with my singles. So that may be coming up next. I'm not sure. But maybe. Yeah. 
Julia. So that is all of our whips. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Um, I have some spinning to show you. Not a lot of spinning. Um, so I have been showing y'all this braid that I got from Three Waters Farm. It is um, their Merino Nylon, and it's Summer summer Jubilee colorway. Yeah, the Summer Jubilee, Jubilee colorway. Yeah, that's what it says here. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to use this for socks. So what I did is I spun, I divided it in half, and then I spun it lengthwise. So um, I don't think I divided it the way I should have because I think I'm going to be getting big chunks instead of more like stripes. And I think I spun it a little thick. Because that's a little bit more of a sport weight, don't you think? Yeah, I would think so, yeah. Yeah. But you can do sport weight socks. Yeah, but it's not quite what I was aiming for. But I was afraid to spin it too thin because I was worried it was going to break. But I love the colors that I you're getting on there. It's so pretty. So this is the other bobbin of singles. These are not plied yet, just to show you the difference. Yeah, so this is... <laughs> yeah. 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 This, this is how thick the plied yarn is. And then... Where's the end? Here, let me go. Take that. Where's the end? There's the end. So this is how thick the singles are, and that's how thick the three ply is. So just I think it's think interesting. I would think that if you three plied it, though, yeah, it would be thicker than if yeah. you just regular plied it. Yeah, but you I need to three ply it to keep the colors. Yeah. In Otherwise, the you'd be barber pulled. Of, yeah. Okay. So I I'm, know a little bit about spinning. I'm happy with it. Um. I'm going to have to adjust my stitch count and everything to do sport weight socks, but that is still the plan. I've made a pair of sport weight socks before. I liked it. That was the Fat Tuesday socks. Yeah, so I'm excited. Um, I'm kind of drawing it out a little bit just because I don't have a free sock needle right now. And I should finish up a sock needle. What a crime. I should finish up a sock before I start these. And I know that once I finish these, I'm going to want to start a pair of socks. So you could have done like me today, instead of freeing up a sock needle, you just ordered more. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what happened today. That's the real, <laughs> that's the real solution. Yeah. So, um, not anything new, but I just thought it was cool to show you the, the difference there. Yeah. Good deal. But, um, continuing on the, the yarn train, the buying train, not really a buying train, but I have... A throw me something, mister, for this week. Yep, you threw it to yourself. This is, oh my gosh, you guys. So y'all may or may not know that I have a thing. Robin has a yarn crush. I have a thing for <laughs> Wool and Vine and for Kristen and for the Yarn Guys and Podcast. And I was watching her episode last Thursday night and I, no, last Friday night. So at some point, at some, some, last week. some night. <laughs> And I saw her, uh, she showed a, a one-of-a-kind colorway. She calls them free swim colorways. And it was called Not My Circus, after the Polish phrase, Not My Circus, Not My Monkeys, like Not My Problem. And I had to have it. So I set my alarm. that She was doing her international friendly update, so it was Saturday morning. So I set my alarm for like 8 o'clock or whatever it was, and I made sure I was up, and I made sure I was locked in. And I added two skeins to my card, and I got card jacked. So I added two more to my cart, and I ended up checking out with these two. So I did get a skein of Not My Circus. This is on her Volca base, which is 80 Tension Superwash Merino Cashmere Nylon, 300 and 435 yards. So it's, I love how she puts a little free swim tag Yeah, a little free swim sticker. Free swim. But I love this. This is like... It's pretty. I'm going to say this. This might be my favorite skein in my stash right now. I don't know. I have some Knox yarn that I really love. It's hard to choose. So it might be top five. <laughs> but look at it. Oh my god. You know what? Y'all know I love pastels. And it's just, it's perfect. And look at the black speckles right there. Yeah, the black speckles would really make it. It's perfect. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm on that yeah, train. So this is going to be a shawl for sure. Maybe by itself. Maybe I'll do a white with it. Or a, a gray. I don't know. We'll don't see. Know. We'll see. Uh, and then I also got, I originally had a skein of de, uh, Goth Day, Goth Day Party, Goth Day Cake, one of her birthday colorways. Uh, I had a skein of that on Footsie that I really wanted, but I got, that's one of the ones I got cart jacked. But um, I know from stalking her updates that usually her Nouveau base, her singles, don't sell as quickly as the Footsie does. So I figured I'd be safe with this. So this is her Nouveau base, which is 100% superwash merino, 400 yards, and it is a one ply, a single ply, 
and this is the colorway Spring Breaker. So that's gorgeous as well. It reminds me of like a pearl. Mm -hmm. So this will probably go with something else in a shawl. I do have another skein of a singles by her. Um, I don't know if they'd really go. So maybe I'll be on the lookout for the next update. There might be something too you could find at DFW, something to go with that. Yeah, but I kind of want to have like a wool and vine oh, shawl. Oh. Because the love is that strong. Y'all don't even know. Oh, I know. So <laughs> that's, that's, oh my goodness. It's pretty. It's pretty. So that is all the throw me something, mister, we have this week. Just no. those two little skinny. Oh, no. I lied. Oh, no, I'm a liar. I bought something when I, I was forgot. out of town. You usually don't have anything. That's why I forgot. That, that is absolutely mm -hmm. true. But usually whenever we go out of town, we try to stop at a yarn store. And in Tampa, um, I probably, if you follow me on Instagram, I was posting a thousand obnoxious baseball pictures. And one of the people who follow me mentioned that there was a great yarn store in Tampa. And I wasn't planning to go to one because um, I felt some guilt dragging Philip to a yarn store. Um when it's just me. I don't feel guilt when Robin and I are both going, but I do feel guilt whenever it's just him and I. But I did go to a yarn stall call, store called Roxy's Yarns, and I try to pick up um, a local dyer, and Roxy's Yarns local dyer is the fiber seed. Which we and already I have some fiber have. Seed, of seed that we got at Yarntopia and in Katie, Katie Texas. Yeah. But this is uh, local to them. This is her goldenrod color in her sprout base. And it's this really pretty golden color with some bits of green in it, which mm -hmm. I think is really pretty. Um, so that is my only throw me something mixture for this week. What's the yardage on this? Um, the yardage. It's a big skein. Yeah, it is 480 yards, and it is a 9010 uh, merino nylon. 140 grams for 480 yards. It should be. Yeah, it looks closer to like a thick fingering or like a sport. Almost. Yeah, it's very plump. Which I really like. Mm -hmm. I like a nice, nice plump. Matches my yarn. sweater. Yeah. Well, kind of, sort of. That means I get it right. Mm, absolutely no. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, later on in the podcast, or do you want me to do it now? You can do it now. Okay. Well, I was going to mention it later, but since we're kind of talking about it now, um, I really enjoyed my visit to Roxy Jarns. Mm -hmm. um, she's easy to find if you are in the Tampa area. She's on... Um, and, you know, not really, she's, you know, on a main drag and was easy to find on GPS on my phone. Um, they have a very cute little shop. Uh, Roxy's is actually named after the owner's dog. So I have a really cute picture of Roxy um, in um, in the shop. Robin will put a couple of pictures um, in the uh on the screen and basically they've got a really nice store when the front they've got an area for notions they've got their yarn mostly is divided by um, brand instead of by weight and so they have a nice area where the fiber seed is and then they've got areas with Matosh and um, some Ba and some Sweet Georgia and then there's some other dyers into a second room where they have a gigantic table for people to come and knit and, and have some fellowship and enjoy each other's company while they spend some time knitting. So it was a very nice uh, shop and we will be going back probably again. We'll, we're going to be back in Tampa at sometime in May. Middle of May, I think. And we'll probably go again so that you can go over and uh, check everything out. Might so. get some fiber seed. Yeah, so um, I totally enjoyed the store. It, it was fantastic. Um, everybody there was very nice. And um, you'll see pictures. Yeah. Right, maybe you'll take like a vlog or something next time we go. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not good at doing that. I'm good at taking pictures. Um, Robin, um, re we record this on Robin's Mac. And Robin has an iPhone, so I don't know enough about editing and video to see if I could take a video. If you I think can, you probably could. I'm not really sure. I We're not very tech savvy. No, well, I know I know the things I know, and I can be taught. Oh, that's deep. I know the things I know. I, I think people <laughs> might understand my point. Yeah. But anyway, um, that's not something I know, but I'd be interested in learning, but um, I didn't take video because I wasn't sure if it would be usable. But we, we can do a vlog whenever we go back. Um, later this year. Yep. Alrighty. I'm excited. So next part, we had some questions this week. Um, this is looking to be a long episode, so um, 
I think we'll just answer the one that was asked a couple weeks ago, and then we'll save the other three for next podcast. Um, but if you do have a question for us, it could be about almost anything, personal, knitting, about the cats, whatever whatever kind of questions you have. I'm about dying if you're curious. Um, I don't really share my techniques and stuff, but I'll answer any questions you have. Um, we have a group... Uh, we have a thread. Thread. <laughs> Words are hard. We have a thread in the podcast group. You can go ahead and leave your question and we'll answer it on the air. Live on the air. Ooh. Not live, but... Um, Still so, on here. Um, Finers4, who is Megan, asked, uh, I hear you talk about a person that sounds like you're saying said. S-A-I-D. S-A-I-D, who is said. Okay, so uh, said is actually C-E-D and it is my brother Cedric. Um, we do talk about him. Yeah, we do talk about him occasionally, um, and I can see how people would think we were saying S A I D. It sounds it sounds the same. Yeah, yeah. So, um, said is short for Cedric. Uh, he does not knit. Well, well, he does knit. He knows how to knit. He has. He does a project a year. No, I well, didn't say that. Starts a project a year. Starts a project and will work on it till it's finished. But that may take several years. Yeah, I think he's finished three or four things. Yeah. So he knows how to knit, and he does, he's doing um, the Rochambeau cowlet right now, because uh, he really liked mine, and he really found, he found a colorway of mine that he really liked, so I gave it to him, and he's knitting it with my yarn, but I think he just has, like, this much of the cast on, but um, if he finishes something and he wants to come on the air, we'll, we'll let him be a guest. Yep. But if he doesn't ever finish it, that's okay, too. Yeah. So, said is short for Cedric, long story short. I did answer it in the thread, but I thought maybe someone else might be confused. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll answer um, the rest of the questions next episode. Yes. Because this one's a little bit long with the giveaways and the... Yeah, we were just kind of worried it might be on the long side and we don't, you know, want to over overextend our stay. Yeah. <laughs> so you have a pattern test. Yes. Yeah, so um, if you've been watching the podcast for a while, you know I have... Um, made the foray into this, some knit design and I have some patterns that I've written. I've had one pattern um, go through test knitting and as I mentioned before I am checking to see if I need to add a size to it. I have another um, pattern that is currently being test knitted test knit and I have a third pattern that is I'm getting ready to put into test knitting. I opened a thread in the Ravelry group um, to see if anybody was interested in test knitting and I have enough test knitters for my current test knit. If you are interested in being a test knitter I am happy to um, you know have anybody uh, come on over and test knit um, you know until I have enough but I will um, put a open a thread in our Ravelry group whenever I have am in need of test knitters and if you're interested I will put the information in there um, I do not um, do the the knitting thread it's the test knit thread itself in our Ravelry group I do it over in the testing pool Ravelry group but if you're interested in being a test knitter um, and, and I will post when I need somebody and um, I feel strongly about um, giving people compensation for helping me out in this. Um, I have had one test knit done in the Free Testers um, Ravelry group. Um, while that is a very good group, you're not allowed to compensate people for their time, and I really didn't like that. That's why I've moved to a different uh, Ravelry group that doesn't have that requirement. So if you are interested in test knitting for me, I do offer a $4 off coupon to Robin Store. So if you are interested in getting more of her yarn or trying her yarn, um, that might be a way that um, would entice you to do so. Yeah. So anyway, just wanted to let y'all know that that might be coming up in the future. Um, Next is shop update. Oh, uh, yeah, but, we're almost done. But I have my oh, friend. Oh, yeah, look, she's back. Oh, yeah, oh, you made her. You woke her up. <laughs> As soon as I say something, yeah. she goes, I'm so sorry, Pearly. Yeah, so um, the shop update was earlier today. Um, for those who maybe have not noticed, I have moved my shop update from 6 p.m. to 5 p.m. because some people were complaining it was interfering with our dinner plans. So, it was not you. <laughs> shop updates are now at 5 p.m. on Fridays. So, um, because of that and because we are podcasting late tonight, some of these colors have already sold out. But I'm going to show them anyway because I'm planning on having them in the update next week. And Robin is also open to, to 
cu- you know, custom. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if you see something you like and it's sold out, you can contact Robin and she can do a custom one. Yeah. Usually what I do is like I'm dyeing things throughout the week. And if you say, hey, I, you know, I missed this color last time and I really wanted it, I'll just pop an extra skein in whenever I'm dyeing that color for the update. So it's not really any more work or anything. Um, but I have a bunch of new colorways. This one isn't new. But I have a bunch of new colorways. So I'll show the old ones first. Um, this is You Can't Stop the Beat. Oh, who bumped the table I bumped now. the table. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, You Can't Stop the Beat, which is the yarn that Tracy of the Grocery Girls chose for our swap. I love that yarn. I have it on Sparkle and on Soft. I got to train myself to stop, start saying Soft instead of Feats. So um, You Can't Stop the Beat. I have a handful of skeins of Pretty Floral Bonnet, which is the Firefly colorway and the colorway that I'm using for my um, Find Your Fade. So I have it on Soft Sock and on Tough Sock. Tough Sock is Paws. Which sock. is your BFL base. Yes, that's my high twist BFL. It is now Tough Sock. It is no longer Paws Sock. I just figured my names are now more on the same page because some two of like paws and feats were kind of together and then the other three were kind of grouped together but now they're all like standard but this names. also gives you an idea of what the soft the yarn really is yeah because the know, marine, twist bfl the merino is softer a than, harder tougher wearing sock yeah. where is your basic you know merino um, nylon base is going to be softer yeah so that's kind of where you're going with the yeah. names um, so I have that. I do have Patisserie Party, which I showed you in the sock I was working on. I actually didn't bring a skein over. Um, and then I have five. I see five. I feel like I have six new colorways. What's wrong? There's, I did a, oh, I know what it is. I had, I had two skeins of a new colorway called Tea Room, which is a very pale green. I have it over there. Yeah. Um, do you want me to go get no, it? No, it's good. Um, they're both sold. So that's why I didn't bring them, but I am probably going to do more for next week. Yeah, so. it's called Audubon Tea Room? Just Tea Room. Oh, I thought it was just Audubon mm-hmm. Tea Room. Oh, The fine. Audubon Tea Room is a lot more gold, and whenever I think of tea rooms, I think of like a pale green. Okay, because I put Audubon Tea Room on my Ravelry page oh, for the project. Yeah, it's just Tea Room. Um, but I do have um, a bunch of new colorways that I can show you. So this is actually a non-repeatable colorway. I have one on Shimmer and one on Solo, which is my singles base. So this is an Easter colorway. It's called Marshmallow Bunnies. Marshmallow Bunny. Just one bunny. Marshmallow Bunny, which is based on Peeps, the little marshmallows that I don't care to eat, but I think they're absolutely I, adorable. You know what I love? I love when people do the dioramas. Oh, they're so them. cute. Oh, I think those are amazing. They're so cute. So um, yeah, this is Marshmallow Bunny. And then um, this is Gilded Unicorn. Gilded Unicorns. More than one unicorn. There's one, one bunny, bunny, two unicorns. unicorns. Yeah. Uh, gilded Unicorns. And it's just a really fun um, light pink and light yellow with some purple and pink and yellow speckles. So this is going to be my next color on my Find Your Fade. But I have... Um, See this right here? Hmm. This. Oh, yeah. This. That. Oh I think I have gosh. a couple skeins of that one left. I know I have it on DK. <laughs> I have another spring colorway. This I'm calling Flower Crown, which is a really subtle pastel um, yellow. It's mostly green and blue with some purple and a little bit of pink. Um, you can kind of see the pink under the label. There's some pink right here? Yeah. And then... Um, right into here. It's in there. Yeah. <laughs> with um, some subtle speckles. Some of the skeins get more speckled than others. That's just part of the, the dying process. Part of the dying process. It's part of the nature of the beast, as they say. So I have a couple skeins on soft sock and a couple on tough sock. And I will have more for next update because I think I'm running running low, which is a good thing for me. So thank you to everyone who buys yarn from me. I feel like I don't say that enough. I feel like I should thank you guys every time, all the time. Because like it blows my mind. Like whenever I saw the the email this morning from Indie Untangled like I cannot believe that people are like interested in what I make so I don't thank you guys enough like thank you I'm so excited to be doing this um and actually I got a question about that but I'm gonna answer it next week but stay tuned so um this is um how would you say that it's a Harry Potter reference I've been saying I've been saying elips elips or elops elops 
It's the Owl Emporium colorway. I probably should just call it Owl Emporium. But that's the name of the shop where Harry got Hedwig. And um, they describe it as like the, the owl, like the animal eyes are like jewels glinting in the dark. So it's kind of like a brownish, um, tannish gray with jewel tone speckles. It's really pretty. Yeah, I think I am sold out of this one. But I'm going to be dying some more because I want to skein. So stay tuned for this next week. And then um, this is my colorway I've kind of been rolling around in my head for a while. And it is particularly relevant. Um, it is Glamazon, which is crazy black, gold, and um, bright purple and um, pink speckles. And uh, it is based on RuPaul's Drag Race, which is one of our favorite trashy television <laughs> shows. And it, the new season starts next Friday. So... We are excited. It's um for those who don't know, it's a drag queen reality competition. It's so good. It's amazing. Like we watch reruns all the time. So um, this is my RuPaul inspired colorway, and I love it. It's so crazy. So um, I have some of that. I think I just have this on soft sock. So that is what went into the shop tonight. Um, if as usual, if you want to see what goes into the shop before the shop update, I usually post. Um, good day. I usually post sneak peeks and um, hints and stuff on Instagram. And there was one more thing I wanted to say. Harry Potter Yarn Club. The Harry Potter Yarn Club. Um, uh, March's subscription went out uh, last week. I think a lot of people have already gotten theirs yet. Have already gotten theirs. A lot of people have already gotten theirs. Um, and the response has been pretty good. Um, I was a little bit worried because I'm, I would, part of me is scared that people won't like the yarn because they don't know what color it is whenever they buy it. But a lot of people like that mystery aspect of it. Yeah, but the yarn is beautiful. I kept a skein of, of it for I, myself. I love, I love the So yarn. I'm pretty happy with it. I will probably show you guys once I make sure that most everybody has gotten it. Um, but Probably I, next week. Yeah, probably next week. Um, we podcast two more times or three more times before DFW. I don't know. I'd have to look at a calendar. Yeah. Um, but if you are interested, um, April's subscription is up. It is the Harry Potter Yarn Club, so every month is inspired by Harry Potter. Uh, and there is a, um, not really an inspiration photo, but like a hint photo. And what is the hint? I can't, I'm not, I'm not going to see, because some people don't want to know the hint. So well, the hint how? photo is the second photo. So if they don't click okay. over, they don't know what the hint is. Okay. So there is, I have to go see what the hint photo is, because I'm, yeah. I'm nosy like that. Yeah, and there is a description of like if it's warm or cool or speckled or variegated or solid or tonal or whatever, just so people See, know. See, I think that's wonderful because I've seen a lot of mystery um, sock yarn clubs where you have no clue what you're yeah. getting. And I, you know, I'm not big on variegated, variegated yarn, but I do love tonals and solids mm -hmm. and speckles. Yeah. So I would, I like that. And I like the fact that you let everybody pick their own base. Yes, yeah, that is why I, I do that's it. amazing. I'm, I want everyone to be as happy as possible with their yarn. So um, you can pick your base. You can pick between... Um, soft sock, tough sock, or sparkle, which is um, shimmer. So um, it's like a drop down, like you choose whenever you check out. And then you can see before you buy what it, what kind of yarn it's going to be, just so no one gets stuck with any yarn they don't want to have. Okay. So um, listings are up. I actually have three times as many people who have purchased April skein than purchased March skein, which is a pretty... Pretty exciting. I'm um, really excited. I'm actually going to get started this week just because I have so many to do. And I do want to get them out before we leave for DFW, which is we're leaving the 7th, something like that, the 8th. We're leaving towards the beginning of the month. And beginning I want to make of sure, April. I just remember Yeah, that. I want to make sure that they're out before we leave. So um, I'm going to keep that listing up until the end of the month. I'm just going to keep renewing it as it sells out. Um, so if you do want to get in on that, um, it ends on March 31st. It's 31 days in March. Okay, I had to think about that for a second. So, the knuckle thing. I know. That is all we have this week. Is that that right? is it for this week. It's a pretty, pretty long episode for us. Um, But, you know, some people like that. So, if you stayed till the end, thank you for, thank for you watching. Thank you very um, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has been with us in any amount of time this year. Um, when we first started doing this, it was something, you know, hey, you want to do a podcast? It was Robin's yeah. idea. And I'm like, sure. And we've had fun the whole time. Um, it, 
I have been very touched and humbled by some of the comments that were in the in the Potterversary in the giveaway. Oh my giveaway thread. Um, we we are mother, normal mother and daughter. We do fight plenty, um, but this is something that I am so excited that we have something that we share together and have a passion about. Um, I know that a lot of you said that you wish you had something like this to share with a family member, either a mother or a daughter, um, son, father, whatever. Um, it, it's it's nice to have something in your family that you connect on, that you always have a safe topic. Um, and then, you know, Robin and I both get it. So it's nice whenever oh, we get it. <laughs> it's nice whenever we go out of town, yeah. you know, both of us are beeline into the yarn show store. You always have, you know, a, a shopping buddy. Mm -hmm. It's always nice to be around your people. And it's nice when one of those people is in your family. Mm -hmm. So, um, we just wanted to thank everybody who's yeah. been with us this year. We've had a great time. We look forward to many more podcasts in the future. Um, hopefully, at some point, I will stop taking the table and I'll we'll be get a real to... table. Yeah, well, I like this table actually, yeah. but it could stay over there, and we could use a different one for podcasting. Mm, maybe. Yeah. But anyway, I guess that's it. Yeah. I feel All like there's right. something else I wanted to say, but now it's gone. I don't know where it went. Oh, oh, I know what it is. Okay, so um, we have gained quite a lot of YouTube subscribers lately. Um, and I know we just. Thank you, but thank you to everyone who's new. Uh, but we are not getting close, but we are getting, we are approaching 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is mind blowing. So I know we just did a podiversary giveaway, but I kind of want to do something big. We will do something big. Maybe, maybe we'll pick up something at DFW. So, um, no, we'll do something big. I mean, and I don't know, I don't know what big is going to be. I don't know if big. We haven't decided yet, but I don't know if big is going to be big in terms of a single prize or a big will be in terms of multiple winners. Yeah. But there'll be something that we'll do um, when we get to a thousand. That's crazy. Yeah. It's, it is a bit There's like, I think we're at seven something. Oh, it's just it's so many people. But thank you. Thank you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like sometimes it, do, it, doesn't, it doesn't really register. Like we're sitting yeah. here and we're talking to each other and we're talking to the camera. But it does not register that there are, like, people out there watching. Like, it's this weird disconnect. Well, but it's, it's kind of like you were talking about with your yarn. It's like, you can't believe that there are people that are interested in you. I feel the same way about the podcast. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's just us. Yeah. You know, I don't, find my, I don't think I'm any more special than anybody else. And I don't have any amazing talents that Some, other people don't yeah. have. Some weeks I feel like we're kind of obnoxious. <laughs> like, I don't know why people watch us sometimes, but... Yeah. You know. Thanks. Thank you guys. <laughs> We're anyway, touched. and thank you to everyone who joined the podcast group. Thank you to everyone who joined the giveaway. I wish we would give prizes to all y'all. Yeah. But we're not billionaires, unfortunately. No, but if we hit the lottery, stay tuned. Yeah, we're going to be giving some stuff away Absolutely. if we hit the lottery. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so thank you guys for watching as usual, and until next week, happy knitting. Bye, everyone. Bye.